I, male 20, and my brother Maurice, 22, are in charge of my grandmother's estate. She left us everything and we're also organizing the funeral. When I was 14, my mother married Jacques. He also has a son Henri, now 19. Henri was always a little idiot, especially because Jacques spoiled him endlessly and Henri would take every advantage. If myself or Maurice had something he wanted, he got a Jacques and then before long, it would belong to Henri. My mother had no spine when it came to standing up to Jacques and Henri knew it. The big turning point when Henri complained that my grandparents gave Maurice and me better presents than him, which they did. They still got him something, but less and not as nice. Jacques went to my mother and my mother went to my grandfather and said that unless they can treat Henri as a full grandchild, they won't have contact with us. My grandfather was a good man, but stubborn as a mule, so he wasn't going to let anybody boss him around. He despised Jacques and also thought Henri was a spoiled little idiot. He said Henri is not his grandson and that he's never going to regard him as such. He will treat him respectfully, but it's not his grandson. So my mother cut us off from our grandparents. Maurice and I secretly kept in contact with our grandparents until we moved out. Maurice moved to Strasbourg to live with them when he was old enough. I now live in Nantes while I go to university. Both of us have very little contact with our mother. However, during the global issue, my grandfather died. Sadly, I never got to see him again, my mother not allowing it. My grandmother told my mother that she broke my grandfather's heart by taking her grandson, me, away from her father to please her crappy ogre of a husband and his crappy runt of a child. My mother was unwelcome at the funeral unless she was coming to apologize to her father before he went to ground, and she better not dare bring Jacques and Henri. My mother hung up the phone and they never spoke again. My grandmother never forgave my mother for this. Then, last week, our grandmother passed. My mother heard about it and said she was coming to Strasbourg to manage the estate. Maurice told her that the estate had nothing to do with her. It was left solely to him and me, and she has no part. We could tell she was fuming, but held it in. Then she asked about the funeral, and I told her I didn't think it appropriate for her to come. She parted ways with my grandmother in life, so it's inappropriate for her to be standing there for her now that she's gone. My mother said she wanted to make things right. I said, fine, I do know one way where I think our grandparents would welcome her under my grandfather's terms. If she was coming to apologize, she couldn't bring her ogre of a husband and his goblin child. She started cursing us, we cursed her back and blocked her. Not the idiot. One of the first things she said was that she was coming down to manage the estate. Then she asked about the funeral. That is very telling. And her comment about wanting to come and make it right? With who? She had ample time to make things right when her parents were alive and she didn't. She can't make things right with her parents if both of her parents are gone. Exactly. Manage the estate. With a moving truck, maybe. It was so cruel of your mother to keep you from getting to see your grandparents for so long. I can understand how it would take a long time, if ever, for you to forgive her. Shifty ogre of a husband and his crappy runt of a child. Your grandmother had a way with words. I'd change the keys to the house and any real estate. Make sure you line up the financial assets before the funeral. Delay it if you have to forestall your mother. Once she takes the assets, it can be hard to get them back. One of my uncle's estates was auctioned off like that. It was one of the most infuriating experiences of my life. We had to bid against random people to get a few sentimental items. I disagree everyone's the idiot here. But simply, the grandparents are idiots for treating a stepchild as not theirs at all. It's their choice to treat them worse, but it's also the mom's choice to say, if you don't accept my stepchild, then I don't want to deal with you. And we all know that if the story was that, you would all hate the grandparents. But simply, nobody comes out here clean. Grandparents treat their stepchild worse than their bio children to their faces. Parents ban their children from seeing their grandparents. Bad stepdad and stepsibling. And a woman is being petty blocked from going to her parents' funerals because she sticks up for her stepkid. I, female 25, am getting married to my fiancé, Jack, male 26, next year. His mom is excited about the wedding and has been very involved. I'm currently looking for a wedding dress and my future mother-in-law insisted on looking with me. I had no issue with that until recently when we went shopping and she kept criticizing every dress I tried on and kept saying things like, No, that's not for us and we can do better. I was getting irritated but kept it inside to not cause any drama. At some point, I tried on a dress and immediately fell in love. I looked at the saleswoman and told her it was the one that I wanted. My future mother-in-law did not agree and was like, Are you kidding? I don't want that one. She's not pretty. 
I tried to remain as polite as possible and told her that although I was thankful she volunteered to come with me, it was still my future wedding dress and therefore my choice and that I was going to choose that one whether she liked the dress or not. She started crying and told me that I was being ungrateful for everything she's done for me and called me selfish. She then left and took a taxi home. When I told my fiancé what happened, he said I should have been more understanding because, as he was her only kid, it was her only chance to live this. I do feel bad because maybe I could have been nicer, but I also feel like I should have been able to choose the dress I want. Am I the idiot? It's her only chance to live this. Huh? What's this exactly supposed to refer to? And how in the world is this more important than your only chance to live your wedding? She had her chance. It was called her own wedding. Not the idiot, but this is your red flag. Your fiancé is always going to take his mommy's side. You have to decide if that's the battle you want to fight for the rest of your life. If she's going to complain about wedding dresses today, then she's going to complain on and about your wedding day, your first new home, and the moments after delivering your children when all you'll be wanting is just support, love and privacy to bond with your newborn and husband. And when it comes to child rearing, she clearly doesn't want to acknowledge and respect your boundaries. Oh, but I'm her only kid and this is her only grandchild. She deserves to be there. Oh well, it may be her second grandchild now, but it's her first granddaughter. She totally deserves to be in the hospital room. Oh, I know she keeps mentioning our parenting and criticizing us, but you have to understand they're her only grandchildren. And it will go on and on and on. You've got a fiancé problem. Please listen to the advice here. Will he have a spine? It's him marrying you, not him marrying his mom. He does show that he has a spine. It's easy to have rose-colored glasses and choose to ignore what's clearly the beginnings and foundations of problems. Where do rose-colored glasses get people? Divorced or abused or otherwise completely unhappy and unsatisfied. I'm 40s female and have two children, Dax, male tween, and Mia, female tween. My kids don't get along super well, Dax thinks pranks are really funny, I guess like every boy, and he annoys Mia with them a lot. My husband and I have been working on it as it's the source of many fights between them. Dax gets a lot of prank ideas from the internet and will often recreate what he sees. Most of them are harmless, something like a fake spider in a food etc, but I think he went too far this time. Dax thought it would be funny to put plastic wrap over the toilet before my daughter went to the bathroom. He says he got the idea online. I don't know if this is a thing, but it's a terrible prank. So he does this right before Mia goes into the bathroom and pranks her. She comes to me crying. She's embarrassed. I told Mia to shower and not worry about the mess. Here's where I might be the idiot. I go to my son and yell at him for what he did. I tell him that that's not an appropriate prank and he's old enough to know that's not okay. And then I made him clean it up. He starts crying, saying it was unfair I made him clear his sister's mess. It's gross and he's going to be sick, he says. It's from her body so she should clean it. But it was his entire fault and literally his mess to deal with. I don't know why I should humiliate my daughter further or why I should have to clean it. And the biggest thing he needs to learn. I told him the mess was his fault and he should think about the repercussions of his actions next time because this is what his prank caused. And then I stood in the doorway and watched as I made him clean the floor and toilet. I think it was an appropriate punishment considering it's really just the natural consequence of what he did and it doubles as a general lesson in how to clean a toilet which he has to learn at some point anyway. Well, my husband disagrees. This all happened while he was at work and after he got home, Dax complained to him. He told me I was overly harsh on our son and put him in danger by exposing him to germs but I gave him the same gloves I use when I have to wash the toilet and it's not like he was unsupervised. But my husband is mad at me and told me that I went too far and that's bad parenting. Of course, my son is mad at me too, but my daughter is on my side. Am I the idiot? Am I a bad mom? Not the idiot, but your husband is and you can see why Dax thinks it's okay to pull this crap on his sister. What the heck is your husband on about? You put him in danger by exposing him to germs. He cleaned a toilet for heaven's sake. We all do it. In fact, lots of teens do it as part of their chores. You should ask your husband if he'd prefer if you left Dax's messes for him to clean up when he finishes work in the future. Exactly. Jesus. Tell your idiot husband that next time your son does something like this, you'll leave it for him to clean because you and your daughter are not doing it. Your kid is learning what it means to reap the consequences of his actions. Your husband should back you up. He isn't doing Dax any good. I'm tempted to advocate for his internet access to be restricted. He's shown he isn't using it responsibly. My son Gabe, 19, is back for the summer after his first year at college. 
Before college, he was a thoughtful kid. This issue started this summer. He came back and won't do a favor for anyone. At college, he rarely called, which was expected. He was busy doing his work. He came back and doing anyone any favors is impossible, like, can he close the door? His answer is, not my door. Or, it's raining, I'm at work, can you make sure the dog is in? But I came home and the dog was soaked since he didn't let him in. It's for everything. Father's Day, he forgot even though his sister and I reminded him, and he didn't even show up for cake. That made my husband really sad. My breaking point was I got called into work last night for an emergency. My husband was gone for the week and my daughter was asleep. I asked him to put the leftovers away since I needed to leave ASAP. It was so simple, yet they were still out when I returned home at 3 a.m. I went to his room, he was still up and we argued. If he couldn't do anything for this family, we won't do crap for him. I then took back the money I gave him for a trip and told him to pay for it himself. He called me a jerk, my daughter is happy with the outcome. My mother called it too extreme even though we have discussed this multiple times. Yes, I have tried to talk to him about this. It's like a brick wall, so he's not telling me if something happened at college. Edit, we refused to buy him a car, but that was before he left for college. OMG, you didn't buy him a car. You are so cruel, so heartless. This is it, something happened. Not the idiot, he's being a selfish brat and he needs to get out of that. All of your requests were reasonable for someone living under your roof. It's not like you asked him for a damn kidney. Keeping a house a home involves everyone living there. And if he's not willing to do his part, he can always live somewhere else for the summer. Tell your son he's an adult and adults must contribute to get things. If he wants to act like a child, you'll treat him like one. I would have done the exact same thing in your situation. There's a baseline of respect required and if he can't do that, then he won't get anything from you and might not even be welcome to stay in the house for free if the behavior continues. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with your son, but he's in need of a wake-up call. Sounds like he's depressed. His entire personality changed while he was away at college. Something is going on here and I'm not at all sure that we didn't buy him a car a year ago covers it. Developing mental health issues during the first year or any year of college is incredibly common. Get him in to see someone. Or it could be he's an entitled spoiled jerk. Depression doesn't stop you from closing a door and still giving a snarky reply. And he most likely got a taste of individuality after being away from family, shifting his perspective and contributing to others. Leaving the dog in the rain would have been enough for me to kick him out. It's really are we the idiot since my husband and I are on the same page about this, but somehow she's making it all about me. My husband's job means that the 4th of July is one of his busiest days of the year. So we've developed a tradition where we invite a bunch of family and friends to our lake house the weekend after the 4th. This has swelled to about 30 people. Many of our friends use it as an excuse to leave the kids behind for a weekend and a lot of partying is involved. For the past two years, my sister-in-law's behavior has been a significant issue at these events. She completely loses control when drinking. I don't think I can list what happened here, but one involved a very scary trip to the ER. My husband and I have had so many talks that she needs treatment with his parents, but they're all in denial. After last year, we told her she can only come to the lake house if she promises to remain sober over the weekend. She threw a fit about it and we stood firm, but the topic was dropped. Yesterday, my husband called to remind her of what we said. She absolutely lost her crap. She thinks I'm trying to ban her because I don't like her. I really like her when she's not drinking. My husband said he'll stay sober over the weekend because he knows it can be hard to be the only person not drinking. She didn't budge. Eventually, he said if she can't commit to not drinking, she can't come. Now her aunt and cousin have gotten involved. They messaged me and said to let her come and they'll watch her the whole weekend to make sure she's okay. I said no dice. Then they started trying to say that I was bullying her. This is a 30-year-old woman. She's had such a hard time recently. She can't be the only one in the family not invited. It would break her heart, etc. I said she was invited. She just can't be drinking because it's not safe. They said that's not fair to her and if she can't drink, no one should be. But I said no. But if they wanted to plan a sober weekend next month, that might be a good idea. They brushed off the idea because they're actually not interested in a sober weekend. Now my husband's parents are getting involved and it's turning into this huge drama. So am I the idiot for not letting my husband's sister come to the lake this year? Not the idiot. Firstly, your lake house, your rules. Secondly, this isn't coming from you. It's clearly a joint decision. Yet you're getting the flack. 
Your husband needs to make it very clear to his family that he is as much responsible for and committed to this restriction on her invitation as you are. It's not acceptable to have his family blame you and hassle you about it. Your husband's already being more than generous by agreeing not to drink too, so his sister isn't the only one not doing so. This is a time to celebrate, not babysit a grown toddler who can't hold their booze. It took 16 years after I took my sister to the ER to get her stomach pumped and her kids moving in with their dad for her to get sober. Some people in my family, with their own drinking issues, still don't think she had issues, despite her own admission. Don't give in. Don't excuse or ignore her behavior. Her life may depend on it. I have the nuclear option in this case. Be really fun. Tell everyone that because of her last ER trip and refusal to stay sober, it's going to be a sober party. Watch how many people go after her instead. I also think that since it's your husband's family, you should hand him the phone every time they call to scold you. Girl, sister-in-law needs professional help, not your party.